uh, congratulations on the film. Thank you. I really, really enjoyed it. And it's been it's been a while since I feel like there's been a not just a comedy like this, but one to see in the cinema. It feels like a lot of comedy has gone to stream and everything else. And I know when this was first kind of pitched and everything, that there was a big battle between the streamers versus Sony. So did, uh, while you didn't have any impact on that, I'm sure, are, were you happy that it was going to go theatrical? I was happy. I mean, it's really made for the cinema. I mean, it's like horror films, right? Seeing it with a bunch of people in a dark space, you know, hundreds of strangers. I mean, that's that's what every filmmaker wants. They don't want it to watch it, uh, you know, half on your phone, on your couch. It'll get there anyway, but I like at least to have, you know, some time in, in cinemas uh, for people to see it. Some, some, some things get lost when you're not sitting in a, in a dark theater watching everything together. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it gives you permission to laugh in a way too. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, the opposite is true where people are laughing so much you miss things and then you watch it again at home and, and you pick things up. But yeah, it's a, all my formative um, memories of, of seeing comedies in theater, or in theaters. So yeah, that's how it should be seen. In your formative years, what were the ones, kind of the idols or the people that impacted you the um, most? I was a huge Bill Murray fan. Mm -hmm. um, I, Groundhog Day is probably my favorite comedy of all time. Um, I was also a big Jim Carrey fan. And uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's so many comedies. Um, I love a lot of uh, British comedies. Um, I love older comedies, um, but Eddie Murphy, Huge, I mean, huge it was to everyone in my generation. Just he was he was the coolest guy, you know, in movies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Take me back to the because I know it was been a, a few years period in terms of when you first saw this ad, and it was kind of in the thing. I mean, how long did it take from seeing the ad to actually getting a germ of an idea to think, oh, actually, there's there's a story here. We might be able to do something with this. It took about uh, a minute. Uh, so the ad was shown to me by one of the producers, Mark Provazero, and. Uh, he told me about it, and then it was, he sent it to me. He told me about the idea, then he sent me the ad a couple days later, and I thought, hmm, it'd be great if Jennifer Lawrence would do this. Um, and so, cut to four, four years later, here we are. But yeah, it, it took, you know, it was a, a lot of time to write the movie and rewrite it and stop and, and, and start it up again. But um, it was clear to me that there was a really dynamic situation here between these parents uh, their son and this woman who's in a specific, particular situation and uh, how they all come together. I, like most people, are a huge fan of, of Jennifer Lawrence and she's always been somebody that's always spoke about her favorite comedies and what films she grew up in, but she's never kind of done one. It feels like everyone's been waiting for her to do, to jump into a comedy, right. especially one like this, which seems very suited for her. How important was she to you as a filmmaker to have her not just involved as an actor, but obviously then as a, as a producer as I mean, well? It, it, the most important decision of the movie. Um, and, you know, she, she brings a certain, um, she demands to be take, taken seriously, you know, as, as an actor because she's so good. Um, and it just, it, it, it kind of frames the movie in a, in a totally different way. Um, and it, as a producer, producer, she's great because, you know, when she makes a phone call, it can really help the movie, um, you know, in ways that if I make a phone call, it's not gonna make a difference. So it's great to have her as a producer. She has a lot of great ideas and obviously she's, so funny and so talented. It just it just really elevates the material. Yeah, I know you went on a big search to find Andrew or to find Percy. Um, what was it? Did you know immediately when he came into the room and he started talking that he was he was the one? Because it feels like when you watch the film within sort of thirty seconds, you're like, I can see exactly why this guy is playing this character. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're, you're watching and you see you're like, oh, is this? Oh, he's funny. Oh, that's oh, that's a that's a good spin on that. I haven't seen that. And then you then then you start. From, you go from laughing to just start praying that, oh, please, please be, continue this, please don't. And it just, it just, by the end, you know, we saw him on the second day. And I was like, this is the worst we can do. This is going to be fantastic. Um, he was, he was amazing. He was really a, a revelation. Yeah. I look forward to see people seeing the film because I've just noticed the lobster over there. That's <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, in terms of uh, comedy, obviously a lot of stuff. You've obviously scripted it and everything else, but a lot of it I know is usually found in improvisations and things. I know that you were very keen to like, you were shouting ideas up and everything else. Is there a lot of that in the film that kind of changed? Was there a lot of the stuff that you chucked in that remained no. in the film? So one of my, you know, my mentor was Harold Ramis, mm -hmm. who would always say, you know, the script is the worst we can do. So, you know, we spent a lot of, John Phillips, my co-writer and I spent a lot of time getting the script in order. But once we got it, we got to set, you know, when we had time, we'd play around. So. Yeah, there was there were some we call them alts, alternative jokes um, that got in, 
but um, for the most part, uh, it's kind of it's kind of the script. I know a lot of comedians have always said that comedy dying is easy. Comedy is is, is hard. <laughs> yeah. In terms of you as a filmmaker making a comedy, and obviously you've made comedies before. How 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 tricky is it? Because it feels like it's quite a tricky thing to do. Because you you just it could be funny to you, and you put it in front of an audience. Yeah, and it really fun. is. You know, it has to do all the same things that a drama does, but do them in a funny way. Mm. And you know, comedy is subjective. Um, I have I think I have a good sense of what's funny, but I've been wrong before. Um, there's you know. It's an art and a science and, you know, things that, you know, we test these movies and sometimes you're surprised by what gets a laugh and what doesn't. And uh, it's really, it's really tricky. But when it works, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. I did want to ask you, actually, there's a show that I've been watching. I spoke to uh, James Marsden about recently, which is Jury Jury, which yeah. is just absolutely brilliant. I can't yeah. believe you guys all pulled that off. Um, people have been talking about that a lot now. And it seems one of those shows that has now started to seep into kind of the, the public conscious, like people have found it and everything yeah. else. You must be delighted with how people have, have found it because, you know, it's one of those shows that they might not know of and then all of a sudden the word of mouth is kind of generated. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, delighted is, is the right word. Um, it has been a pleasant surprise. I didn't think anyone was going to see the show. I didn't know if anyone knew what Freebie was. Um, and it's been great. I mean, it's, and also James is so funny and I feel like this is really, in some ways, his, people are getting to see like, how funny he is. He is, for someone who's that handsome, uh, to be that funny, it kind of pisses me off, to be honest. Like, yeah. hey, I'll, I'll take this part. But uh, he's just so good and he's so sweet. And uh, I'm really happy for him. Yeah. And just finally, I, I, I hoped I'd get to talk to you or Lee at some point doing this job that I do about, you mentioned Harold and, and, and Bill as well, about your Ghostbusters 3 and yours was one of the ones back in the day where it was the closest and that Bill was the one that was like, oh, maybe this could be the one, how, how close was it? And was there ever a disappointment that you didn't get to, to do it? Um, yeah, I mean, it was close. The Sony greenlit the movie and Bill just never read the script uh, and they couldn't really chase him. You know, Bill is, is a, uh, his, own, his own person and uh, he just never really, uh, he, at that point in his life, he didn't want to do it. So it's like, there was just, what can you do? Yeah, you as know? a fan, did you enjoy Afterlife? It seemed, it seemed to have a fan, obviously. The I did enjoy it, yeah, yeah. I did very much. Yeah, I did, stuff. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to meet you. Thanks so much for your time. Really Thank enjoyed you. the movie. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! Hey, 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 that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!